In this video, we're going to take a look at graphing systems of inequalities. We've already looked at this, but this video is going to focus on absolute value inequalities that are included within the system. So if we take a look at our very first inequality, we see that we have the absolute value bars. So we'll want to review how to graph absolute value equations or inequalities. Remember that this value inside the absolute value represents our horizontal shift. It also represents, therefore, the x-coordinate of my vertex. The negative 3, or the value outside of the absolute value, represents my vertical shift, or in other words, the y-coordinate of my vertex. And then the number or the fraction in front of the absolute value it represents my slope. So if we take a look at this example then, my vertex is going to be located at the point 1 comma negative 3 because it's a positive or the opposite of this value that we see inside the absolute value bars and then comma the exact value we see on the outside. So 1 negative 3 for my vertex. So I'm going to plot that to the right 1 and down 3. And from there, then my slope, the amount that I'm counting up and over, is up 1 and to the right 2. So from here, I'm going up 1 and to the right 2. I'm going to do that again, up 1 and to the right 2. I'm going to go back to my vertex, and I'm going to reverse that up 1, and this time to the left 2. Up 1 and to the left 2. I'm going to do that a third time. Okay, This is a greater than or equal to, since it's an or equal to. I have a solid line, so my V is solid, and then since it's greater than, I'm shading everything up above that absolute value. Okay. My second one is a line. I know it's a line because it doesn't have the absolute values. It's just x plus a number. It replicates that y equals mx plus v, so I'm going to change colors. And I'm going to start at my y-intercept, my 3, so up 3. And from there, I'm going to count my slope, which is 1. So up 1 and to the right 1, up 1 and to the right 1. And I'm going to reverse that, down 1 and to the left 1. This line is just less than, so it's dotted. Okay, and my shading is below, so I want everything below the red line. Okay, again, my final solution is a region. So I want to highlight the region that represents the overlap of both, the solution that would satisfy both inequalities. It's kind of an odd shape here. And so any point located in this region would represent my solution. Let's do one more practice problem. Again, reviewing absolute values. This first inequality is an absolute value inequality. My vertex is at 0. There's no number plus or minus inside the absolute value bars. So 0, comma, a positive 3. So I'm starting up 3. And then from there, I have a slope for my absolute value inequality of negative 2. So I'm counting down 2 into the right one. And again, doing it as many times as possible is helpful to just maintain as much accuracy as possible. This inequality is a less than, not equal to. So my absolute value is going to be dotted. And then since it's less than, it's shaded everything below. So I'm shading everything that's below this absolute value. I'm going to change colors again. And I encourage you again also to be using color pencils. I want to shade this. We recall from our last video that this is a horizontal line down at negative 4. It's dotted because it's not equal to. 
and this time it's greater than, so it's everything up above my blue line. I want the region of overlap, the points or the area that represents a solution to both inequalities, and that's this triangle region in here. So anything within this region would be an ordered pair or solution to the system. I encourage you always to check your answers. An easy point that I can check that falls in my region is the ordered pair 0, 0. Since it falls in my region, it should satisfy both inequalities. So I'd be asking myself, is 0, my y-coordinate, less than negative 2 times the absolute value of 0 plus 3? And it is. And then is 0 my y value greater than negative 4? And it also works. So this is checked in both inequalities, and therefore this ordered pair 0, 0 is a solution, and so would any other ordered pair in this region. In summary, we just want to remember that absolute value inequalities can also be part of inequality systems. And don't forget that I want to graph my absolute value inequalities by identifying my slope and my vertex. Any absolute value inequality should be in the shape of a V.